Okay. Part six to our part series. James would love my parts, my reader supply. All right, so we talked about the birth, whether it be natural or C-section. We, if we had a C-section, we're headed home. So what are we headed home with? Well, we should have our puppies in one of our portable incubators. Um, this, you can travel for two or three hours, no problem whatsoever, longer if necessary. Puppies are kept at a regulated temperature, you know they're okay. Ooh, mum put her in a crate. We put mum in a crate in the back of the car. She's, uh, she's gonna go to sleep. Um, she's, uh, you know, just make sure that, uh, you know, if you've got a long trip, then I would check her after an hour and make sure she's okay and stitches look all right. But she's just gonna crash for, for an hour or two and not wanna do anything. All right, so now you're home. Well, you, hopefully you've already got your whelping environment set up. Um, and then on this video, uh, this next, I'm gonna cut out and you'll see a little video here how our setup is. So why do we use that system? Because the whole idea behind this is, is that you have, well, I like to use a crate. You don't have to use a crate. You can use a whelping box. You can build your own whelping box. I've got videos on how to build one if you want to do that. It's a lot of work. And you can buy a crate for like $55 to $65 at Amazon or Walmart. The nice thing about a crate is you can lock mum up in there. She wants to be in there anyway. She's not getting out. You can go off to town and go do some chores. You can come back. You know she's not taking her puppies and gone somewhere else in the house. I like the ability to control her access to and from the crate. But the, the reason why the, all of these systems work so beautifully well is our patented heating system. So the problem with anything else that's out there, well, the two things you've got to do, you've got to provide a safe environment, hence the crate. And you don't want puppies in a closet somewhere or under the bed. You've got to have warmth. If puppies get cold, they die really quickly. Cold puppies do not live very long. They don't have fat, they don't have much reserves. A cold puppy gets in trouble, you know, within an hour or so, the puppy's in serious trouble. But on the other side of that, the flip side of that coin is mum has a fur coat on and she hates the extra heat. So one of the solutions is, is that you have your crate here and here's your puppies and here's mum. And you put a heat lamp up here. and it radiates heat down like this. Well, the problem with this system is, first off, the person who's closest to the heat lamp is mum. She hates it. She does not want to be in there. She's stepping up and down. She's already got a fur coat on. She's stepping on puppies. Horrible, horrible solution. Horrible solution. That's the worst. It's, it's, it's marginally better than not having any heat source at all. Okay, so then the next solution is, is that you put, Mum, this is now looking down on the whelping system. Here's mum, here's mum here, and here are her puppies. And what you do is you put a heat pad underneath this whole thing. There's a heat pad underneath here. Okay, marginally better than the heat lamp. The problem with this is, is great for the puppies, sucks for mum. She is being cooked from underneath doesn't want the extra heat at all. She is not thankful that you did that either. Not a good solution for her as well. So this is our patented idea that we came up with about six years ago. And I think now I've got something like 5,000 people who are using this system, it might be more than that. But this works so beautifully well. And when you see this, you'll think, why didn't I think of this? So, this is like a red pen. What we do is we manufacture a pressure sensitive heat tape that goes on the bottom of whatever your crate has for a floor. If your crate doesn't have a floor, there are solutions for that. We're not gonna go into that here. But basically what we do is we give you a heat tape that is manufactured by us to fit just inside the perimeter of that whelping crate box, whatever you've got. And there it is. And then that then plugs into a thermostat. Has a little reading on it so you can set temperature up and then that then plugs into your wall outlet. And we manufacture these for both use in the US and other parts of the world that are on 240 volts. 
So the only place that there's heat now <clears throat> is directly above this heat tape and nowhere else. So the first thing is, is that mum, she's happy to be in the middle here. It's nice and cool. She doesn't want, she wants it in there, she's happy. The babies are nursing on mum. They're getting heat off mum because they're laying up against her. They're happy. They stop nursing and they then don't like this relatively cool floor that mum likes. They start moving around and they bump into the area where the heat is. And that's where they then spend 95, 98% of their time right on top of the heat tape. And we then put a pig rail above that. So there's a pig rail above this whole thing here. So the puppies are now basically under the pig rail. So there's the pig rail. So there's the pig rail. And the mums are the babies. And now under the pig rail, on top of the heat, can't get squished by mum, safest place they could possibly be. Mum's happy, wants to be with her babies. So, all right, enough of that, because I spent now the first part of the video trying to sell you my product, which is not the intent of this. But that is what, so, so the, to the point here is when you come home, you should already have some kind of a heated whelping system set up. And hopefully mum has been in that for a few days prior to well, so she's comfortable with being in there and it's not a whole brand new experience for her. So what we find is, is that the moment we get home, we put mum in there. She already knows what's going on a little bit. She hasn't seen the babies yet. They're actually in the incubator. We get mum in there. Mum might hear babies. She might be sniffing around. If she's a, not a first time mum, but she's done this before, she's going to know what's up. She's expecting to see her babies. If she's a first time mum, she may not know what the heck is going on. So we take the first baby and we cup it in our hands. She's already in the, in the, in the crate. Oh, I like a double door crate with a big side door because you can get your head in there. Take that first baby. It says simulator baby here. What are we gonna have to simulate a baby? There we go, there's a little baby. Put the baby on our hands. Take the baby in there. Cup it so it's no legs and feet and heads are loose. Put it in there, let mum snip on it. And hopefully mum will Snick on it, she might lick on it a little bit. If she does, I'm gonna offer her the back end of the, of the puppy and see if she'll lick the back end of the puppy and stimulate the puppy. Some dogs don't know what the heck is going on. They are completely lost. And those are the ones that you've got to spend the next few hours kind of explaining to them what, what's going on here. But this is a trick that works beautifully well. Take some peanut butter and smear it on their back end because dogs like peanut butter. And she'll see that peanut butter and it's got the same consistency of poop and the same color as poop and she'll start licking that off great she'll start licking that off and when she's finished licking that off she may then continue to lick on the puppy wonderful we just succeeded in introducing her to a puppy if she doesn't stick some more peanut butter on that butt and let her lick it some more after you've done that a couple of times if she's still not on board with it take the puppy and put the puppy on a teat make mum lay down on the side put the puppy and see if you can get the puppy to nurse and if it does, she might get up, she might want to turn around, let her do a little bit of that. Watch for any behavior that you don't like. Sometimes dogs can be a little bit lost, especially under anesthesia, as to what's going on. But basically, you want to get that puppy on and therefore get the next puppy out of the incubator and introduce it to the next puppy. And hopefully, within 20 minutes, you've got all the puppies on her nursing and the beginning of the whole process is going the way that you want it. And if, if you do succeed in getting that done, then it's time to put a blanket over the whole crate, leave a little opening so she can look out and let her just be quiet and get on with it. And then if you just stay close by so you can give encouragement to mum. Now, if you hear a puppy that's crying a little bit, go check and see what's going on. She may just be you know, cleaning the puppy up and puppies aren't crazy about that and that's quite normal. But if she's got a puppy in her mouth and she wants to move it somewhere, then don't let it up. You know, just take the puppy out of her mouth and say no, and be firm with her. If you had a natural birth, then it's probably you don't have to go through this same process. Natural birth, what we do is as the puppies are born, and if we've got some time between one big puppy had been born and set up and umbilical cord cut off, dried off and breathing, we put that puppy onto mum and let that puppy nurse while mum's having contractions for the next puppy. The very act of a puppy nursing on mum will actually help with the contractions. So uh, in those situations, we typically don't, and I mean, again, I'm not, haven't done natural birth for such a long time that I'm just not, and no longer really up with it. But, but basically, in the majority of cases, mum knew what was going on. She was on board with the whole process. 
There's a huge difference between a dog that's been through anesthesia and is now groggy and really doesn't quite know what's going on. Okay, so let's, let's assume now that we've got to the point where we've got puppies that are nursing on mum, mum accepts the puppies, what are the next things that we need to do? Well, weigh them. So here's the things that we do and why we do them. So the first thing is, is to get mum and babies together. Let's get them going and nursing. So that's our first goal, is to get babies so they're nursing. And so mum will lick on them and stimulate them. Number two, let's start weighing puppies. All the pups. Keep yourself a notebook. I'll be able to identify these puppies. <clears throat> and we're in our puppy care kit, by the way. You get a digital scale. Weigh the puppies. Why do we do that? Because we want to see that puppies are gaining weight as time goes on for these next 10 days. A puppy, you know, what are the weights of puppies? Well, for Frenchies, a seven to 11 ounce puppy is pretty normal kind of a weight range. Puppies that are less than, less than seven ounces, those are the ones that really do take special care. You don't want those ones dropping off or they lose too much more weight. Four and five ounce puppies, they really are uh, gonna be struggling. And almost certainly, you better have an incubator because you're almost certainly gonna need an incubator for those kind of puppies to get them up to around eight ounces where they can get back with their brothers and sisters. <clears throat> we wanna see what's gonna happen is they're probably gonna lose half an ounce of weight over the first 24 hours. So a puppy that weighed eight ounces, don't be surprised if it weighs seven and a half ounces the next day. But from there on out, we want to see half an ounce or more of gain every day in every puppy. And if we have a puppy that's standing still, be aware of the fact that it might need to be supplemented with some milk. If you see a puppy that is going in the wrong direction, that is step in and do something right away. That's a puppy that if it continues to start losing weight, especially in the first 24, 48 hours, that is a puppy that uh, is going to get in trouble if you don't step in and do something. Number three, let's check mum. So they may have given her antibiotics to go home with that she needs to take. If so, give them to her. Um, check mum's incision. Make sure it's clean and make sure nothing is opened up. Sometimes this happens. You'll have a, you know, if you just get a little tiny little opening, don't get too worried. It's got a kind of a, it's closed up with some scab on it. The blood's here, the blood's congealed. Don't worry about it. But if you've got an open hole or open holes, that is a concern. That may mean that you have to have a trip back to the vet to put another stitch in it. You don't want an open hole with bacteria getting in it because you can get an infected dog and the dog can die. So you pay attention. It doesn't happen very often, but pay attention that her wound looks clean and it's not, you know, you don't have stitches that are coming loose. So check mom's stitches. Um, by the way, I didn't even mention this in a previous video, you should have already checked all the puppies to make sure that the puppies look okay, that their palates don't have an opening in the top and have a cleft palate or cleft in the lip. Cleft palate puppies are ones that have a hole in the roof of their mouth. Very hard to get those puppies to survive. Uh, I know it sounds cruel, but my recommendation for those with a completely open palate at the top all the way from the front to the back is those puppies do not need to be allowed to live. You will go through absolute hell trying to get that puppy to live and I, I have never been successful. I haven't done it a lot, but I can tell you that my success rate in a cleft palate puppy is a big fat zero. Now, other people will say otherwise, fine, but just be prepared for the fact it's gonna be a long road and that puppy's gonna to have to, see the problem with the cleft palate is there is a hole between the inside of the roof and its nostrils. And so when the puppy sucks on a nipple, air just comes through from its nostrils into that hole and it can't produce a vacuum and it cannot nurse. Those puppies have to be raised by hand by basically two feeding. They can't bottle feed because they can't produce a vacuum. They're going to have to be, or you can use maybe a miracle nipple or something like that. But it's, and you'll need an auction, you'll need a, uh, an incubator. So, and then you have to go on doing that until they're probably six months old before they're going to have this pallet resection and repaired. So, um, I hate euthanizing dogs, but I think that in situations like that, it's probably the right answer. All right, so, so this, that should have been, by the way, on the, the well, we should have, on the birth, we should have checked their puppies to, to make sure that they, uh, th you know, other things as well, you know, do they have four legs? Are the legs all turned around the right way? Is there something badly wrong somewhere? Um, okay, 
check my stitches. Um, okay, then the next thing is, over the next 24, 48, well, the next seven days, check mum's boobs. So she can, especially in small litters where the puppies are not draining the, the, the teeth very well, they can get a very hard, what's called mastitis, a very hard lump in one or more breasts. Gets inflamed, it gets hot, she can start running a temperature, it can get uh, infected, you can lube a breast over this, the whole thing can erupt in a big abscess. The solution to this is if you see any signs of any of these breasts getting hard, then typically what happens is the top breasts that aren't used very much, because the bottom breasts tend to be more prolific in terms of milk production, top breasts don't get used very much, put puppies on the top breast, get them to try to nurse all the teats, make sure they're all nice and soft and pliable and not warm. If they are feeling ropey and hard and hot, get a puppy on it, get a hot towel on it, massage it, milk it by hand, get that breast going. If you don't, you can run into problems. So check boobs. <clears throat> Uh, number five, eclampsia. Be aware of the fact, and I'm going to spell this wrong, eclampsia. I'm sure that's completely not the right way. It's probably a Y in it. Eclampsia is lack of, of, uh, of um, um, calcium, and it's being pulled out of mum with milk production. And those dogs need extra calcium, and they can really get in trouble. So typically, you'll see what they call milk fever. The, pup, the dog will be um, a bit listless, it'll have a high temperature, it will obviously not be feeling very well at all. Be aware of the fact that you might have eclampsia. And if that's the case, there are calcium shots you can give, there are calcium supplements. We actually do uh, increase the amount of calcium in her diet by putting cottage cheese on her food. I'm not sure how effective oral, oral calcium is, but certainly it's, you know, it's free to try. So we just do that. Okay. Um, okay, so then, you know, number six is, is just generally, you know, happy puppies. And just check that you've got happy puppies. A happy puppy is a quiet puppy, or a happy puppy is a puppy that's nursing quite a bit. An unhappy puppy, or a puppy that's in problems, if you put your finger in the puppy's mouth, it needs to feel moist, it needs to suckle on your finger and feel warm. And if you're not sure, try it on another puppy and make a comparison. A puppy that's in trouble will feel cold, it may not nurse at all, and it may feel dry. All of those are signs that you've got an impending problem that you've got to get on top of that really quickly. Um, okay, mum's diet. Mum's diet, when she comes home from a C-section and she's had anesthesia, she's going to be thirsty. Do not let her drink too much water at one time because she'll just throw it up. And don't let her eat a lot of food at one time because she'll just throw it up. So monitor and control water and food intake over the first 12 hours and just give it to her in pieces. And don't just give a bowl in there because she's likely to puke it up. Um, right, so then what have you got to have on hand if things don't go right? Well, one of the things that can happen is mum doesn't have any milk. This is not uncommon, especially in first-time mums that their milk production is very, very thin. Maybe you can express a tea and get a little drop of some yellowy stuff on it, that's colostrum, great, let the puppies have at it. If you're getting any milk at all, probably milk's gonna come in and you're probably okay. You'd be surprised about what puppies can get out of what seems like a barren mum. But if you're not getting any milk at all, then you're gonna have to step in and you need a bottle, and where is my bottle? And some goat's milk. And uh, here we go. In our puppy care kit, you get both those things and you get a feeding tube. So you get powder goat's milk. Love this stuff because you can mix it up with hot water, just what you need. It's hot and ready to go right away. When I say hot, I mean nice warm water. It's not as hot as coffee, but get in there. We use a zero to three month old baby bottle with a silicon nipple, works great. And if you've got problems where puppies won't nurse, then there's nothing that you can do other than have a feeding tube. And I've got whole videos on feeding tubes and how you use this device. It's very simple. People get scared about feeding with a feeding tube, but I can tell you this, if you've got no milk in mum and you're gonna to have to hand raise these puppies and they've gotta be fed every three hours, um, to feed five puppies takes 10 minutes a puppy, it's 50 minutes, it's an hour's worth of your time every three hours, you're not getting anything else done. But you can, you can tube feed five puppies in probably less than five minutes. And you know exactly what they've got, they won't aspirate. Okay. Um, okay, so let's just get this off the board now. Well, let's just keep on going over here. 
So let's just, let's just talk about other things, other issues here. So here's number seven. Um, Mum won't eat food. Well, you're going to have to, um, so, you know, obviously she's got to eat food, mum's diet. Um, introduce something that's interesting to her that she hasn't had before. We use Bill Jack. This is the product that we use, is Bill Jack. Um, you will not, it's in the frozen section at Walmart. You will not find that, I think, on the West Coast. You can't find it in the Walmarts, but you can find it in the Midwest and, and, and the East. But look, it's not the only, you know, what I'm getting at here is, Maybe some kind of wet, semi-moist food tends to work fairly well. You can feed her boiled chicken and rice. Sometimes hand feeding mum will get her to eat food where she wouldn't eat it. She needs to be eating food. She may have a poor diet for the first 24 hours. Try to get her to eat some food. Uh, milk aspiration. Milk aspiration in puppies. So this can be a problem where you see puppies nursing, mum's got lots of milk, and there's just no milk running out of their noses. What can you do? Not very damn much. Um, but what you can do is have a stethoscope. This just comes as part of our puppy care kit. Have a stethoscope. Listen to their lungs, listen for a rattly lat sound. Compare that with another puppy if you're not sure what rattly sound sounds like, but it'll sound like bubbling noises in their lungs. That is a sure sign they've got milk in their lungs, and they likely could develop a pneumonia. And the solution for that is to have antibiotics. Clavamox is typically what you administer, or amoxicillin. They're probably going to need first signs that you think you've got any kind of mucusy discharge from their nose, anything that acts like they have some kind of breathing issues or a cold. Get Clavamox on board, give them that for eight days, so you can stave off a possible pneumonia that could develop from that. Um, if you've got a puppy that won't nurse, or a puppy that's cold, time for an incubator, Time for a feeding tube, get them food. How much do you give them? You give them 1 30th of their body weight every three hours. That turns out that a eight ounce puppy gets eight cc's every three hours. So that's the remedy for that. Um, mm, puppies that won't poop. Typically you don't have this problem in the first couple of days, the first 24 hours, but you can give a puppy an enema of nothing more than warm water and let's see if I've got a syringe here. Basically take a syringe, take a syringe, get some warm water, put a dash of dishwashing soap in it, kind of makes it a bit slippery. Warm water, suck up that, take that and just basically gently squeeze it and put it up into their butt gently. Not a whole month, just a little bit. And then typically that will get a puppy to poop within the next five, 10 minutes. So if you've got a puppy with a hard belly, hasn't been pooping, it's whining, likely the puppy's constipated, that's a fix for that. Diarrhea, got a puppy that's got a lot, really, really loose stool. Puppies do tend to have loose stools anyway, but a puppy that's getting really loose stool, typically you don't see that to be a couple of days into this, but some canned pumpkin on your finger, put it in their mouth, help, it's a really natural way of firming up poop. Uh, and it's very, very safe, totally natural solution. Uh, not that I'm necessarily into natural solutions, but it's one of those things that you can actually do without messing anything up. So a little bit of pumpkin in their mouth, that's a good idea. Medications, you're not doing anything. Nothing's happened to these puppies unless they're in trouble until they're at least two weeks old for their first wormings and six weeks old for their first shocks. Okay, let's see, I made some notes here. Let's see if I've got anything else I should have talked about. Um, no, I think I've about covered everything. Um, if I haven't, I'll think about it and we'll add it into the next one. But that is now 24 hours put to bed. We're home now, officially, at least halfway through. I went to look to see how much time I made you waste on this first part. It's about three hours. So we've got three hours into this and I'm sure there's another three hours to go. So you've got the better part of a day if you go through this whole course, which I doubt very many of you will do. But either way, we would like it if you subscribe to us and uh, have fun with your puppies. And uh, um, if I can think of anything else I should have added, it'll be in the puppy care part. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching the, the video. Uh, I really appreciate people who subscribe to me. It helps me, encourage me to do more of these videos. But do remember, disclaimer here, I am not a vet. I'm not a licensed medical professional. I'm purely a person who's been breeding dogs for the last couple of decades. Any information that you got from this video, use at your own risk. There's nothing implied here, and certainly this is, should not be used as a substitute for advice from your veterinarian or your medical professional. I hope you enjoyed the video. Come back for more of them.
Bye.